Next thing that we're going to do is review some of the reactions that we've already seen that produce aldehydes and ketones. Section 18.7 is called Review of Synthesis. of aldehydes and ketones. One of the first reactions that we looked at was an oxidation of a secondary alcohol. This reaction produces a ketone from the loss ultimately of those two hydrogens. And there are two oxidizing agents that we can use to do this reaction. Potassium permanganate, which is definitely preferred over the carcinogen sodium dichromate and sulfuric acid. We can also oxidize a primary alcohol down to an aldehyde. This reaction requires the mild reducing agent PCC. If we use a stronger oxidizing agent, we're going to end up with a carboxylic acid instead of an aldehyde. We also looked at the ozonolysis of alkenes. Depending on the substitution of the alkene, depending on what kind of R groups are attached to the carbons that are in the alkene, you're going to end up with either aldehydes or ketones. Remember, this is a two-step reaction. First, we use ozone, and then follow that up with dimethyl sulfide. And we just cleave at the carbon-carbon double bond. the left half of this molecule, because it has two alkyl groups on the, on the carbon, it's going to give us a ketone, and the right half of the molecule, because it has a hydrogen present, it's going to give us an aldehyde. And two last reactions that we saw in chapter 17, the Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction. And acid chloride with aluminum trichloride, which produces a ketone in which one of the alkyl groups is a benzene ring. And then Last but not least, the reaction that we looked at with carbon monoxide and hydrochloric acid in aluminum trichloride and copper chloride, which produces benzaldehyde. Those are those five or six, if you want to count this as two, are the methods that we've already seen for synthesizing aldehydes and ketones. That's the end of that section. And what we're going to look at next are some new syntheses to produce aldehydes and ketones.